Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. An Amber Alert sent out about a missing Minnesota girl could lead investigators to Cass County. Good evening and thanks for watching. The Meeker County Sheriff's Office says tips have come in that could potentially point to five-year-old Elena Jean Ertl being in Cass County. They say she was taken from her home in Watkins, Minnesota around 2 this morning. They believe she was taken by Zachary Todd Anderson. They say Anderson is driving a 2002 white GMC Sierra with a Minnesota license plate reading 107 KMT. His last known location taken from his cell phone was 90 minutes away from Watkins and Todd County, Minnesota. If you see either one of them in your area, you're asked to call 911. A full description of Elena and Zachary can be found on our Facebook page. So make sure you like us on Facebook. That's where the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates will be on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. A man who drove his car into the basement of a South Fargo home last night has died. Police say the man, 60-year-old Keith J. McDougall from Fargo, suffered some type of medical issue which led to the accident. When police arrived, they found the car inside the house with neighbors performing CPR on the unconscious driver. Two people were home at the time of the accident and luckily weren't injured. Police say there was only one person in the car and that he died because of the medical emergency. No, not injured from the crash. His identity has been released as Keith J. McDougall from Fargo. On Friday, highway workers near the North Dakota-Montana border came across a motorcycle crash ha that happened almost two months ago. 30-year-old Zachary Baldwin was reported missing by his family back in June after he went out on a motor motorcycle ride and never came back home. Montana Highway Patrol said they're trying to figure out what caused the trash. The crash, a GoFundMe account, has been set up to help the family with funeral calls for Baldwin. It can be found in the story on valleynewslive.com. A car crash near Hankinson sent two people to the hospital and one person to jail. 24-year-old Taylor Hoke is being held at the Ridgeland County Jail and is facing DUI charges. Police say she was driving north in the southbound lane on I-29 around 9 o'clock last night. The car driving the right way saw Hoke but couldn't avoid the crash. Both the driver and the passenger were taken to hospitals in the area. The extent of their injuries aren't known at this time and the crash is being investigated. There was a little rain in our area this, earlier this afternoon. Justin, can we expect some more of the same this weekend? Yeah, thank you, Cornelius. Good evening, everybody. Well, the rain is there, especially in Lakes Country, starting to move out, and we're going to have a really nice end to the weekend. As for today, though, most of us did stay below 70 for a high. We're at 69 degrees right now in Fargo, 67 Jamestown, Devil's Lake, and a 64 as you make your way out toward Bemidji. The reason why we're so cool, we have that brisk northerly wind out there. It is breezy at times between 15 and 25 miles per hour. And as for the rain, as you can see, it is around the uh, Fergus Falls area, the deep Detroit Lakes area, just some light showers just to the south of Park Rapids and Wadena. Nothing heavy from this, but you could see a little sprinkle if you're outside under one of these. Everybody else mainly just partly cloudy. That's going to be the story as we go through this evening, and we're going to clear out as we go through the overnight, and the clearing skies will get temperatures way down there into the upper 40s for lows. We're going to rebound nicely as we go through Sunday with plenty of sunshine. Details coming up later in the newscast. Thanks so much, Justin. And remember, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team Weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNO Weather in the App Store. It's that time of the year again. Parents are sending their children off to college and one of the main worries when leaving is knowing whether or not their child will be safe. We're going to have that story for you here in a second, but we're going to go to NDSU where they are. Oh, we have the story. Anyway, Yovana Simic has that story for us. It's definitely exciting. I mean, the nerves are definitely there, but it's more exciting than nerve-wracking. Erin Barger is excited to start her first year of college at NDSU. She says the thing she likes about campus is that it's very safe. The reason we're safe campus is because people pay attention. Ryan Ostrom, director of Residence Life, says it's important for first-year students to know about safety procedures on campus. They're excited to be here, but yet they're really nervous to make that connection. And so I think safety is one of those pieces that if we don't touch on it with them, uh, they maybe won't think about it. From an escort service and the emergency blue light, the campus has everything, even an app that's like a virtual escort would locate where you're at and you could say I'm going to be going to a certain location and then from our dispatch center they can actually track. Compared to campuses across the nation, 
NDSU is one of the safest because they have a zero tolerance policy. However, Nasham says students still need to keep an eye out. Although Fargo Moorhead is a very safe community, you still have to be paying attention. Um, and if something feels wrong, let somebody know. I like walked through like going through like all of my classes first, like walked from my dorm room to all of my classes that I had that day a couple times first. In Fargo, Yovana Simich, Valley News Live. NDSU makes it a requirement for incoming freshmen and parents to learn about safety on campus at orientation. And over to NDSU again, they kicked off the school year with move-in day. Parents packed boxes and dropped off their kids on campus as students across the state and the nation filled up their dorm rooms, getting ready for the first year of college. The new Bison Herd says they are excited to start this new adventure. I'm very excited. Uh, something different, that's for sure. I mean, got a lot of people here that I know, so it's nice to know some people and have some connections. The first day of classes for NDSU students is Monday. A group in the area raised money to support service dogs today. The second annual Heroes Helpers Run featured a silent auction as well as a motorcycle ride. The, the event, which is put on by the 2nd Brigade MC, raises money for Service Dogs of America as well as bringing awareness about the importance of service dogs. Last year, more than $4,000 was raised and the group is hoping to surpass that number. Without events like this and fundraisers like this, we could not do what we do every day. We are strictly donor funded. If you're interested in donating to the Service Dogs of America, head to ValleyNewsLive.com and click on this story. You've probably seen a few more rainbows in the Fargo-Moorhead area over the last few days. That's because Ephraim Pride 2016 is underway. The Pride celebration continued today at Island Park. Pride in the Park had about 80 vendors there, from the local Pride Center to churches and businesses. People of all backgrounds came together to support everyone who's living their life out and proud and to also raise awareness about the challenges the LGBTQ community still faces. People from North Dakota, Minnesota, and even Canada showed up for the event. It's fun to see that there's so much support in the community, especially after, you know, some of the events that have happened this year. It's just nice to know that there's a lot of support and that we are going to grow and keep growing every year. The Pride Parade hits downtown Fargo tomorrow at 2 p.m. Later on Valley News Live at 6, we'll tell you about a gold medal Olympic athlete who comes to our area every now and then to visit some family. And a brief shower did hit the Fargo area. It gave us a trace of rain and we were cool. The temperature is only reaching 69 today, well below normal. We're going to be uh, a lot warmer as we start next week. Details next.